Good evening, labor rights. Good evening from the Next Level team. Good evening from Tony Astafan, Simeon Albert, who would love to be here, but they cannot be here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Eight more days for five more years. Brothers and sisters, it's just eight more days. And before I begin my presentation, I want to recognize the Honorable Prime Minister, who will be here anytime. I also want to recognize the many Labour Party ministers and parliamentary representatives who have been working hard for you over the last five years. Brothers and sisters, your government has worked for you because you voted for them to work for you. And this evening, as we think of the next eight more days, I want to, to tell you that the most important thing about an election is the exercise of the right to vote. We can only win an election if we vote. And we can only win if we vote more than the other side. So if they vote more than us, then we cannot win the elections. We can only win if we exercise the right to vote. So tonight, I want to address you for the next 10 minutes on the right to vote. Because we live in a democracy, in a democratic state. And the most important thing in a democratic state, the basic principle, the fundamental principle of our democracy is the exercise of the right to vote. And so anybody who tried to frustrate your right to vote is affecting our democracy. And you have heard in the radio, you have heard the opposition say they're going to camp out at the airport. They are going to block the runway. They're going to take photographs of your family who come here and to report them to the Americans. And all they are doing is trying to instill fear in the lives of Dominicans and to prevent them from coming back to exercise the right to vote. But I want to tell you tonight that our democracy our constitution says that you have a fundamental and sacred right to vote. In fact, before 1951, if you had to vote, you were required to have a certain amount of money. Only bourgeois could vote before 1951. But now all of us, Zafa Pomalewe, all of us together, we can exercise this right to vote. So, I want to say this this evening. I find it rather strange that the people who say they will report us to the Americans, they know that the Americans believe in democracy and the Americans believe in the exercise of the right to vote. And so tonight, I want to go through three cases with you. I want to explain to you why your family, your relatives can come back to Dominica to vote and there is nothing wrong with that. Your family who are away, your relatives who don't live in Dominica, they can get on a plane on the 7th of, of December and come to Dominica to vote for Athena Benjamin. Wait, 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 right here. They can come to Dominica to vote for Athena because there is nothing wrong in coming back to vote if you live in the diaspora. I want to explain something about the law in America. Because, brothers and sisters, there is a case in America that decided that if you go back to your country to vote, the American government cannot do you anything. Because there is a case that was decided in 1967 in the United States. And I want to explain that case to you 
and afterwards I want you to explain to your relatives overseas what that case says. In 1967, the United States Supreme Court decided on a case brought by a Jew called Mr. Afrohim. He was born in Poland. He wasn't born in Israel, he was born in Poland. And at the age 33, he became an American citizen. So he was naturalized just as many of your relatives are naturalized in the United States. When he was 57 years old, he went to Israel and he voted in the parliamentary elections in Israel when he was age 58. And a few years later, he went to renew his passport. And the United States government did not renew his passport. They said he had lost his citizenship. So what he did, he sued the United States government. And he won the case in the United States Supreme Court. And I want to tell you what the American United States Supreme Court decided. The first thing that they decided in, in the American Supreme Court is that the Nationality Act, which provided that citizens would lose their right to vote if they, that if they would lose their citizenship if they voted in a foreign country, that that law was unconstitutional. So from 1967, if you are a naturalized American, you can go in any other country where you are registered and you can vote. So your people, your relatives who live overseas, by virtue of this case of 1967, they can come back to Dominica to vote and there is nothing that nobody can do above that. They can take that picture if they want. They can make a nice Labour Party album, but they cannot prevent them from voting. They can block runway if they want. The police will arrest them, but they cannot prevent our relatives from coming back here to vote. The second thing, brothers and sisters, is that the United States Supreme Court decided that since there was a 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, that that amendment protected the rights of every citizen, whether you were born or you were naturalized, that amendment protected the rights of citizens against the false, against the forced removal of citizenship by the United States government. What that says is that your relatives who are overseas and who are naturalized Americans are protected by a law in the United States called the 14th Amendment. Interestingly, brothers and sisters, the 14th Amendment was passed in the United States to protect black people, to protect black people so that they could vote freely in the United States. And here we have black people in the United Workers' Party who want to prevent black people who are liberates from voting when the United States law says that black people are protected by the 14th Amendment. So the United Workers' Party is acting against the law of the United States. The persons who will break the law is not your relatives who are coming here. It's the United Workers' Party who want to prevent them from coming here. Brothers and sisters, many of you would know the name Claudia Sanford. Those of you from the Canadago Territory would know Claudia Sanford. Those of, many of you would know the name Ronald Green. Well, you might not know him because most time he's sleeping. And some of you would know the name Mena Joseph. Now, I am saying, I am referring to those people because in 2010, after the elections, they brought a case in the High Court in Dominica. 
and they were arguing in Dominica. And I want to tell you what they were arguing. They were arguing in the courts that persons, Dominicans living abroad for more than five years were disqualified from voting. Isn't that the same thing you hear in Linton and the guys talking about these days? The very same thing they're talking about. But I am not surprised because Linton didn't learn in school and he still hasn't learned. What they, what they were arguing in the court in Roso was that in Vecas, the Prime Minister should have lost. In La Plaine, Mr. Peter Sesha should have lost the elections. In Carib Territory, it should have gone to Claudia Sanford. That's what they were saying. Because they said that people came back to vote who were living overseas for more than five years. Well, let me tell you what the courts in Dominica said. The courts in Dominica says that people who live overseas for more than five years have the right to vote once their names are on the register of voters. That is the law in Dominica. That is the law in Dominica. Once your name is on the register of voters, you have the right to vote. So you can live in St. Martin, you can be living in St. Thomas, you can be living in St. Croix, you can be living in the United States. Once your name is on the register of voters, come back and vote. Also, brothers and sisters, I want to refer you and to discuss with you briefly a case from Nevis. And in that case, in Nevis, there was the issue as to whether or not certain persons were disqualified from being on the voters list, on the register of voters. And that case said, that you cannot be removed from the register of voters until you are given a fair hearing, a right to be heard, and you can make representation as to whether or not your name is removed. So your family who live overseas for five years, ten years, they just cannot be removed just like that from the register of voters. There must be a hearing, they must be given an opportunity, they can challenge it, they must be notified, all of those things must happen before. And so I am saying to you this evening that the law in Dominica, the law in the United States, the law in St. Kitts and Nevis has protected us and our relatives and they can return and exercise the right to vote whether they're living overseas for five years for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years, they can come back and vote. I also want to tell you that the law in Dominica is that there is nothing wrong in taking a plane ticket and come and vote for the party that you support. There is nothing wrong in providing tickets to labor rights to come back and vote because all you are doing is facilitating the exercise of the democratic right to vote. And so, if you have relatives overseas, tell them, come back and vote. You must vote, wake up early, beye, sabeye, go and vote. All you need to, be, to vote. You don't need a shower to vote. You only need pen and paper to vote. That's all you need, pen and paper. And so I'm saying to you, encourage your relatives overseas. If they know where they can get tickets, if they know where they can be facilitated, let them come back to Dominica exercise the democratic right, vote for the Labour Party, vote for five more years, vote for Ruth vs. Garrett, vote for Athena Benjamin, five more years, brothers and sisters, five 
more years. Thank you. Thank you. No,